guys, my name is the Goof Noob, and every day I upload videos about aviation. Because of yesterday's video, I would like to talk about the Tupolev 144, the Russian supersonic that I kinda made fun of. Even though it had a, quite a few crashes, it actually flew before Concorde, making it the first supersonic jet to take to the skies. Don't forget to check out some of my older videos. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. The Tupolev 144 was the only other supersonic jet that conveyed passengers. As you can see, this plane definitely looks like the Concorde, but it is nothing like it. It was blatant, uncomfortable, and kind of dangerous. The TU 144 definitely did knock off some of Concorde's design, but it did some things better. It carried more passengers than Concorde, and it even flew quicker than Concorde. But in the 60s, when supersonic planes were still getting developed, the supersonic projects were not just made to fly fast, but to assert superiority. In the beginning, there were three nations trying to develop the first commercial supersonic aircraft. The US, the joint French and British governments, and the Soviet Union. The US backed out very quickly, and the project failed. This meant that Concorde was in the lead. This was bad news for the USSR, but spies managed to steal around 90,000 documents about Concorde, catching up to Concorde and flying just two months before Concorde. Concorde was based on customer service. What I mean is that it was relaxing and quiet to fly with Concorde. Instead, on the 144, its primitive engines and cooling systems worked together to produce a sound so loud that passengers couldn't even talk to each other. Many passengers would have to pass notes to each other to communicate, and there just isn't the same feeling and ambience as Concorde. Flying on the 144 wasn't even a great experience. There was a single route from Moscow to Almaty in Kazakhstan. The Tupolev 144 was also extremely fuel thirsty, and it couldn't even cross Russia. Compare that to Concorde, which could reach every corner of the world. Out of 102 flights, there were 226 mechanical failures, 80 of which were severe enough to delay or even cancel the flight. For the Soviet Union, it was also a huge political risk to make a 144 with passengers aboard crash. It crashed in front of thousands of people during the 1973 Paris Air Show, and it crashed again in 1978 when a fueling line ruptured. Then again in 1980, when one suffered an engine explosion, causing an emergency landing. The problem with the TU-144 was that it was rushed during its development. Getting the plane into the skies was more important to the Soviets than actually building it well. The USSR had fewer resources and primitive technology, so you have to hand it to them for even getting the plane into the air. Also, unlike Concorde, Russian engineers had to deal with engines that needed afterburners at all times, making it very fuel thirsty. Another factor was that Concorde had wings that were good to fly in subsonic and supersonic. If you don't know what subsonic is, it's the speed that most commercial planes fly at today. The Tupolev had wings that could fly well in supersonic, but not in subsonic. This meant that Soviet pilots had to land their plane very fast making for super hard landings and even needing a parachute. The Soviets developed small deployable wings at the front of the aircraft that would increase stability at low speeds. But all the innovations on both sides of the Iron Curtain couldn't overcome the reality that SST or supersonic travel was just too expensive. In the West, tickets for a flight on Concorde were extremely expensive, but in the Soviet Union, things were a bit more awkward. Who exactly was supposed to fly the 144? The price of a ticket was about the same price as a ticket for a normal flight. This was not enough for operational services, and it was definitely not enough to maintain the plane. After all, the 144 was utilized simply for propaganda uses, and it was retired after not even a year of service. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you never miss out on a video. Thank you for watching, see you tomorrow!